Hi, my name is Bryn Boslett, and I am an infectious disease doctor at the University of California, San Francisco. And today I'm going to be discussing the laboratory identification of the streptococci within the group A strep pharyngitis module. By the end of this module, you should be able to differentiate the streptococci from other gram-positive cocci via standard laboratory techniques and describe the nomenclature of the streptococci species including hemolysis patterns and Lansfield groupings. Gram stain is the first step in identification of the gram-positive cocci in culture. And gram-positive cocci include both the streptococci and staphylococci species. The word coccus, or plural cocci, means seed or berry in Greek. On gram stain, it's easy to see where both staph and strep got their names. Both have a round, spherical cell shape. However, the arrangement of cells is slightly different due to differences in binary fission during cell division. Streptococci form a chain of spherical cells because their division occurs in one linear direction, whereas staphylococci divide in various directions, forming more grape-like clusters. Once we identify a gram-positive cocci on gram stain, we can use a number of biochemical tests to further analyze the organism. Catalase is an enzyme that does what it says. It catalyzes the conversion of hydrogen peroxide to water and oxygen. All animals and most other living organisms contain this enzyme in their cells to protect the cells from the harmful effects of hydrogen peroxide and other free radicals in their environments, which are byproducts of many metabolic reactions. However, Strep species are unique in that they do not possess the catalase enzyme. When a colony of staph is removed from a plate and added to a drop of hydrogen peroxide, as seen in this picture, bubbles form vigorously as oxygen is produced because staph does contain catalase. However, if a colony of strep were instead used, no bubbles would form. It is worth briefly mentioning one important hereditary disorder of the immune system called chronic granulomatous disease, which is tied to catalase production. Patients with chronic granulomatous disease have an immune system dysfunction in which their phagocytic cells lack the ability to form reactive oxygen compounds, making it difficult for them to kill certain types of bacteria. However, they are less susceptible to catalase negative bacteria such as strep species because strep metabolism provides an accumulation of hydrogen peroxide which the host's immune system can then use to fight off the infection. So remember, Staphylococcus bubbles, but Streptococcus does not. Once we feel confident that we are working with a member of the strep species, we have a number of tests that we can do to begin to classify them. Certain species of Streptococci can either completely or partially lyse red blood cells when grown on a blood auger plate. Beta hemolytic strep species will lyse the red blood cells completely, creating a colony with a clear zone of hemolysis around it, as seen here in two examples. Alpha hemolytic strep, on the other hand, will only lyse some of the surrounding red blood cells, leaving a greenish halo around the colonies, which contains iron metabolites from the hemoglobin. Some of the species that are capable of this pattern include the viridin strep, and one way to remember is that viridins means green in Latin. Finally, the gamma hemolytic strep species are somewhat of a misnomer because these strep do not do any hemolysis at all. They are sometimes also called non-hemolytic strep. In addition to the pattern of hemolysis on blood auger, we use a number of different tests and characteristics to classify the more than 50 species of strep that are currently recognized. One known historical classification scheme is the Lansfield Serologic Classification, organized by Rebecca Lansfield, pictured here, in 1933. This system was based on the composition of carbohydrate antigens in the cell walls of the hemolytic strep, which vary somewhat between species. However, these groupings can be very confusing. In some situations, one Lansfield group is analogous to only one species, such as with group A strep being synonymous with strep pyogenes. However, some groupings contain a number of species, such as group D strep, 
which can be further broken down into the Enterococcus and non-Enterococcus strep species. There are even some species, like Strep discalactiae, which contains within it several subspecies that carry different carbohydrate antigens in their cell walls and therefore may be classified with multiple Lansfield groupings. Finally, there are some strep species that are not addressed by the Lansfield system at all because they do not have the carbohydrate antigens in their cell walls. Strep pneumoniae is one example. So while the Lansfield classification system is still commonly used, it is important to recognize its complexities and its limitations. We can now begin to fill in this schema, starting from the left with the alpha hemolytic strep. The alpha hemolytic strep are composed of two general groupings, strep pneumoniae and the viridins group strep. Recall that the word viridis means green in Latin and that these bacteria produce partial hemolysis, creating a green hue surrounding the colony. Also note that the viridins are not a genus and species name, so it's not technically correct to say strep viridins. Rather, the viridin strep are a very large and heterogeneous group of strep species that are part of normal human flora in the oropharynx and GI tract, but they can sometimes cause invasive disease in a susceptible host. Neither strep pneumoniae nor the viridins group strep have Lansfield antigens, so they do not have an associated Lansfield classification. The two groups can be differentiated on several other characteristics. First, we can use antibiotic susceptibility disks to differentiate them. In this case, these disks contain the antibiotic known as optokin, which, in this case, strep pneumoniae is sensitive and viridins are resistant. We can see from this picture on the left that strep pneumoniae will not grow in the presence of the antibiotic disk, where viridins do not seem to be bothered by it at all and growth goes all the way up to the level of the disc. Second, strep pneumoniae is unique among the strep species in that it has a capsule. This gives bacterial colonies a smooth, pearly appearance on auger plates, which can be seen here in contrast to a viridin strep species on the same plate, which has a much rougher texture to its colony. Finally, strep pneumoniae and other encapsulated organisms produce what is called a quelling reaction. The quelling reaction is a test in which an antibody solution is mixed with a sample of bacteria, allowing the antibodies to bind to the capsule. This increases the surface tension of the capsule, causing the bacteria to appear to swell. An example here can be seen with strep pneumoniae. Viridin strep do not have a capsule, and so their quelling reaction will be negative. Let's now discuss the beta hemolytic strep, which can be further classified into strep pyogenes, also called group A strep, and strep agalactiae, which is also known as group B strep. These species can be differentiated biochemically by their susceptibility to the antibiotic bacitracin. Strep pyogenes is the only beta hemolytic strep that is sensitive to bacitracin, meaning that its growth will be inhibited by the disc. We can perform this testing by placing the antibiotic impregnated disc into an auger plate that has been recently inoculated with bacteria and allowing it to grow overnight. As you can see here, a clear circle called the zone of inhibition is produced around the disc when the organism is susceptible to the antibiotic in the disc. If it is resistant, as strep agalactiae is to bacitracin, growth near the disc is not inhibited at all. This is similar to the optokin test with the alpha hemolytic strep. The gamma hemolytic or non-hemolytic strep species is synonymous with group D strep. Notably, members of this group are united in their ability to be non-hemolytic but certain species can actually produce both alpha and beta hemolysis in some settings. Many members of group D strep have now been recognized to be sufficiently different from other strep species and thus have been reclassified into their own genus called the genus Enterococcus. Both Enterococcus 
and Group D strep species are part of normal human flora in the GI tract in the biliary system. So it might not be surprising that they both grow well in the presence of bile salts. On a special media containing bile in a compound called esclin, hydrolysis of the esclin by bacterial enzymes results in the formation of chemicals that turn the media black, giving a positive bile esclin test as seen in this picture. To distinguish the two groups, we can inoculate the bacteria into a 6.5% salt media. The group D strep species are less tolerant of higher concentrations of salt and so will not grow. However, Enterococcus will grow well in salt concentrated media. Here is a summary table and thank you for your attention.